Peggy 12. It's on the schedule to implement Steam Workshop, as people are, were asking. Um, and uh, this is something we're, we've been thinking a lot about, is uh, exposure to mods and the easiness of updating mods and getting mods into into the games. Yeah. The modding community, community has always been really important to us. And I mean yeah. you can see what they've done with, with Crusader Kings 2, for example, and all the previous games is that yeah. Having good support for mods really improves the longevity of the game. Yeah, there, which is because there is a chunk of the community that likes playing mods. I think there's about, or is it ten percent of all active users that had played CQ2 in December mm -hmm. had tried a mod. We want that to increase. Yeah, because uh, more exposure to creativity creates more fun for gamers. That means that they get more people playing, more input, etc. So that's part of why we're uh, using Steam Workshop. If people think the game is fun for a while, you know, play 50 hours or something and yeah. then drop it, it's just, you know, we lose them. We won't be, I mean, EU3 and its expansion has been alive since 2006, Seven. 2007. January, I think, released. Yeah, and, and, and we want people to be keep playing this game. For as long. For as long, at least. Yeah. And I mean, modability is a part of that. And of course, awesome. you can still play the game offline, so yeah. there will be no, no. like yeah, you well can't I'm start the game with Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's definitely true. But I'm saying the multiplayer architecture, yeah. it's... Yeah, it makes it very much easier for us, and we yes. can focus on stuff that, that we really think are important, like the gameplay, and don't have to put mm. effort into create architecture for things. Yeah, our own netcode. Yeah. In Portugal, it's a country you pick if you want to play yeah. the colonial game, because Fra it's a really well placed yeah. to go early. I like France, because you can do it. You can do most things. You're not that good uh, like a, a peaceful trader, but... Yeah, I only recently started playing, I, I tried a bunch of other countries, but recently yeah. started playing in France, because of course I had to play yeah. them in multiplayer and yeah. then you need to practice. Now we're, we're spoiling future dev diaries a little bit, but oh. uh, the Mamluks have 10% cavalry combat, 25% trade steering. Trade oh steering right, is a so concept that, uh, that means that when you steer and trade from a node, your, your power is 25% better. That's going to help you keep the Portuguese at bay yeah. if they ever show up. Oh, well, sadly, the Portuguese have something similar in one of their ideas. Oh. But the cavalry combat uh, ability, that gives us our cavalry fights 10% better. And it's absolutely vital when we're, cause we're not the military power. Yeah. I think the trading really makes some, other, some countries more interesting than they were before. Mamluks is definitely an example. Yeah. That. There's no yeah. Norse anymore. There's no Norse promises in 1444. No. <laughs> it's probably for some reason. Now yeah, we're all Catholic. Yeah. I think you have a pagan province up there in North somewhere. Well. Shamanist, it's uncolonized Slapland. They are yes. the Sami. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Any country. Any country that is on the map can be played as. Yes. Some more difficult than others. Yeah. I don't think that Riga is uh, trying to is that easy to do a world conquest on? It's a good challenge, though. Yes. You can't you can't create any trade nodes. You can't create any uh, trade routes. But mm. the thing is that what what they, they are there representing mm. trade flows or potential trade yeah. flows. And, and as a monarch, you can't really move that. But you can, since you can't change how the trade flows. You have yeah. like a bunch of trade nodes that are dead at the start of the game. And as you project power, as you build colonies. Yeah, um, and it's, you can actually change how trade shapes up, but yeah. I mean the basic infrastructure is there for yeah. unchanged. Yeah. There's lots of people claiming to be the rightful heir of Rome. Yes, uh, I think uh, this is one of the few countries that doesn't. Japan. Yeah. We, we did some heavy changes to Japan. There's not these four uh, daimyos we had in the EU free divine wind. Uh, we t we also reduced lots of the provinces, making them the historical divisions. You have the Date clan and the Takeda and Yamana and we have a new system where Japan is a country and every every daimyo is a vassal of it, <coughs> which is basically the 
independent clans here, which have the system daimyo. The difference here is that any vessel to Japan can fight another vessel. This is something we worked together with a bunch of the uh, researchers we had for the Sengoku game to mm -hmm. make Japan a really, really different, unique and more historical place to play in. Japan is almost like a minigame in itself. <laughs> Yeah, as you see, there's still a bunch of stuff to do with the yeah. interfaces. We need tutorial. We need to yeah. get the AI. I mean, the AI runs on slightly better than EU3, but we want it to be better than that. Yeah, definitely. And and also a, a huge focus for us is, is to we want to widen the appeal of the game and get more people to play it. I mean, not by sort of making it more simplistic, but but enabling people to understand how you play the game better. So we're going to have a tutorial yeah. and, and, and try to look at the interface even a bit yeah. more so that yeah. people look at this game and some people think it's complicated, but it's not as complicated as people think when you look at the old E3 game. Our goal is to have the game out early Q3, I think, or mid Q3, whenever Q3.